My guest today is one of Broadway's funniest leading men who has triumphed in shows like You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, The Producers, and Young Frankenstein. Now he's going down with the ship with everyone over at Disaster. How's life, Roger Bart? <laughs> so good. Yeah? After that introduction, I sound so damn popular. You are popular. Good. And leading are you man kidding applied me? to me. You are Broadway.com Audience Choice Award winning. Are you Woo-hoo! kidding me? You're a popular guy. I'm so happy. How's life? That. I still love it. It's How's your displayed. hair? I love your hair. My hair is, I would sort of define my hair as, uh, Last stand. It's last stand. <laughs> you know, I grow it out like every, if I'm lucky, if I'm in New York, I get to grow it out every few years. And um, it, it's, it's becoming more and more desperate. So what you see now is it's <laughs> last stand. I, I love saw it. a few pictures of me back in Young Frankenstein when I grew up pretty long too. And, and I was thinking, oh, that's, that's, a, that's a sad and desperate middle-aged guy trying to grow his hair out. Now it's, <laughs> now it's really sad. But what do you put in it? Like, what's your process? Well, you know, I, I don't mean, want to make this, th- actually, I do want to make this all interview. No, we talk about it. I mean, you know, we both, this. obviously, we both spent some time with our hair. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I, I moved from Bedhead, which is a nice uh, yeah. a greasy wax pomade. I know of it. And um, then now I've transitioned to, like, it's dirty clay, like gray, nasty clay. And so you kind of do this with your hair like that. And I've, gotten, I've moved from the, the Bedhead because the Bedhead, when you have longer hair, yeah. right, it adds a lot of, like, weight to it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I like mine to look effervescent, like my personality. <laughs> I love picturing you just, like, choosing I all really the, do. You know what? I kind of lean over directions. and I just go <laughs> like this because I have, like, a, you know, 10,000 calyx now. It's going to be, uh, you know what, I'll meet you when we're supposed 75 and <laughs> I look like my uncle and there's just kind of two little patches right here. But they'll be happy patches. Oh, my God, it's going to be so good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, you've been gone from Broadway for, like, over seven years. We've yeah. missed you. That's really nice. Thank you. For and, uh, you know, it's kind of like, it. wh- where the hell's Roger Barton? It's like, oh, wait, he's on my DVR because you're yeah. in every TV show. Yeah, for a while there. I was but now you're on Broadway. Like yeah. And so, okay, so the last time you were on Broadway was Young Frankenstein. Right. Which I know was sort of a huge production. Huge. And uh, very oddly taken by the community. Yeah. Audiences liked it. It still ran over a year, but, yeah. but kind of like oddly received, right? Yeah, well, I think, you know, we maybe some better ways to go about um, com- coming into Broadway. And it's, it's, I think it's for everybody who's been in a, a major hit. Uh, and, and I mean, as an actor, I meant for the director, for the producers. Yeah. Sometimes the follow-up show. I think we could have come in with a little um, a less tood from what I understand. Uh-huh. I don't know. I was just, you know, doing it every day, but that well, seems to be the awesome consensus. It. I thanks. Really did. It I was thought really you were fun. hilarious and, uh, and you really right. grounded the whole show. So, oh, well, uh, so I, and that whole cast was was incredible. It was an amazing group. So, but after that, does yeah. that make you then suddenly think twice or think three times about every possible I'm sure there've been Broadway things that, that have come your way yeah. over the years. Well, you know, yeah. What made you want to come back in this ridiculous, yeah, adorably ridiculous show, Disaster with an exclamation point? Well, uh, it was a combination of factors. Um, one, I love, you know, I love Seth um, so Medesky. much. And yeah. Seth is, a, is a, uh, a wonderfully talented, you know, I, most people know him that are maybe watching this, but he's a brilliant p- uh, pianist and conductor and a dear, a dear friend. That was a part of the, its appeal was, was him. Um, the show itself is, um, what I love about it is that it's uh, insane and um, Offers the opportunity to be right on the you know the razor's edge mm. of goofing on it, but also being completely I- immersed in the drama of the show. Right, right. Um, and that that edge I love, like as in a lot of Mel Brooks' stuff, is the same way. Is a really fun thing to uh, to play, mm-hmm. and I loved the part because he was just so awful um, uh, uh, and responsible pretty much for everybody. So what's this guy's name? T- Tony Del Vecchio. Never played in Italian, too, by the way, so that was part Del of the appeal, Vecchio, too. great name. Love the 70s music. Um, right. I grew up in the 70s. Um, love those movies. And Kevin Chamberlain is a, a lifetime, uh, lifelong friend of mine. I uh, went to Rutgers with him. So that was also a Oh, wow, I didn't realize that. Yeah, and my daughter is here um, going to school, and she's in ninth grade this year, and I've spent you know, the last five years in Los Angeles attempting to pay for her life. and. Um, and mine, and um, I really didn't want to sort of blink and be gone. Mm. Um, and this time, I was just about it had it. I really just wanted to be back in New York. So I feel pretty confident that I'm going to remain here and as long as, as, as I can. Oh, I, nice. I'm a Northeastern oh, good. boy. You know, it's I grew up here. in Jersey. Yeah, so. I thought we lost you. No. I mean, Los Angeles is a beautiful, wonderful place, but yeah. New York is um, uh, more suited to me. 
and mm. uh, an eye to it. So you're the owner of this, uh, what is it, it's a casino. Yeah. It's what year is it, the late 70s? Yes, yeah, in the late 70s, yeah. I'm the owner of a casino. So the sideburns are- Yeah, Rebecca these are something I would Rebecca. never do. Yeah, and really kind of uh, fun in, in a weird way. You're enjoying uh, that? Uh, it's amusing. You could probably do some interesting things with that style I love that, I could do that. You know you what's could, nice, I, I get now confused for Amish guys all the time, it's really <laughs> weird, and I'm gonna transition so well right into uh, to Scrooge right after this is over. <laughs> but uh, um, I'm the owner of a casino, uh, and we're just our big opening night, it's a huge, huge casino tied up in the Hudson River. And I've, like in some of these wonderful old disaster movies, right. um, you know, m my I've taken some of the, the great uh, sleazy characters and sometimes not sleazy characters of those movies. So I'm I'm really a uh, I have the uh, priapic uh, unctuousness of uh, Richard Chamberlain in Towering Inferno. Got it. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, a little bit of the kind of complete denial of any problems going on at all. Of Bill Holden in Towering Inferno, mm -hmm. who, who which is a remarkable movie when you watch it now because. Not only does the fire department take these really weird long breaks where they sit down because they're tired, <laughs> even though there's a terrible <laughs> fire going on, which you have to check out again just to see Steve McQueen resting. <laughs> At one point during during this incredible, like a fire is going on in this huge building, and he's th they open the scene with him resting with his head against the wall, like, oh God, I'm tired. It's amazing. <laughs> Um, and then, <laughs> and then Bill Holden is sort of like going, "What's the problem? The fire's fifty <laughs> feet below. A uh, fifty, you know, floor, floor stories below. Right. We're fine. Just put it out. I'm not going to cancel the party, which I love." <laughs> and then the second act of the show, <laughs> I basically am doing, um, you know, Gene Hackman in the Beside Adventure, says amazing things like, uh, you know, anyone who wants to live, follow me. You know, it's stuff that's amazing. <laughs> and my character decides that he's going to be the hero in the right. second act, um, even though I end up still end up killing everybody by accident or by <laughs> purpose, but I'm an idiot. Uh, and so that's really fun. So I, I get this amazing sort of smorgasbord of, right. of wonderful people to, to, right. to, uh, to salute through in my performance. And um, the other appeal, of course, is this group of actors that Seth has assembled are really some of, there's so much uh, fun to be around every day. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. The They're list. super, super talented. Yeah. Um, everybody's done a lot. And, um, and on top of it, everybody, uh, you know, most everybody are mothers and fathers. So, mm. you know, we kind of have a giggle at work and we all talk about our kids a lot. And then we go home to our kids. And so it's kind of fun having done shows like Tommy and things like that and yeah. not being the oldest person in the company. I think now, you know, Faith and I are sort of the, the seniors uh, and Kevin Chamberlain. And, um, and we love talking about, you know, kids and family. So it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful place to go to work every day. But there must have been moments during rehearsal. I mean, w what you're asked to do in this show yeah. is kind of, I mean, you, 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 you're, I don't want to give anything away, but the whole second you act. I spent some time with stuffed animals adhered yeah, to there's me. Yeah, there's some stuffed animals involved. <coughs> you know, it's funny too, you, you mentioned that because they were, there were these rehearsal uh, 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 animals um, that were, you, you know, you look like you sort of, I, I, if I like broke three plates or got the, the ring on top of the bottle, I would win these things, you know? <laughs> and I kept on saying, you know what, I'm gonna wait for the, the real animals, yeah. uh, but they never came. <laughs> it was the weirdest thing. Like I, it's literally like like they, we were in our last day of tech, and I was looking at them like, wait a minute. Um, when do they you arrive? Know, are they coming? <laughs> and they and they said, uh, no, that this is it. And I was like, all right, all right. Then at least put like a comfortable sock inside, <laughs> and that's basically what my my uh, my wow. animal friends are. And it, I, I like it. It seems to draw a lot of uh, praise from the kids that come to the show. They seem to be obsessed <laughs> with that. that. Yeah. They love that. Yeah, part. as a matter of fact, if I were if I were more clever, I would I would sell my own personal ones in, in the lobby, <laughs> but I won't. <laughs> Make a whole side Not business this, out yeah, of it. Yeah, maybe we'll see. Uh, but you know, in rehearsing with these great actors, or, you know, you've seen them do so many great things over their careers, mm -hmm. and then you see them just doing the stupidest things. Yeah, and that, that must have been so much fun. Like, yeah, it's the best. Done. It's the best. Yeah. I mean, you know, we um, we're kind of a really big yummy cheese fest every night, and. Um, um, and everybody is, you know, Rachel York is so in her, in her wheelhouse of, you know, S-H-S-H-E-U-R-D-A-Y night. <laughs> she does that, which I love. Uh, everybody's just having a great time and, and seeing them all in this kind of um, state of high cheese. Although I have to say, the surprisey, surprisingly cheesy person, uh -huh. who I didn't know, he was a closet cheesist, was uh, Adam Pascal, who I don't think has had the opportunity 
to right. do this kind of right. shtick. No, he hasn't. And no. and he, uh, I have to actually run downstairs and catch one of his earthquake tremor acting moments <laughs> because it's so damn good. It's so funny. So it's great. They're a great group. As someone who is naturally funny, I mean, I think of you as like one of the funniest people. I, oh. I wasn't kidding when I said that intro. Thanks. But d is it hard when you're forced to act with people who aren't funny, who think they're funny? Because you mean that, Los Angeles? Because Adam Pascal, that totally <laughs> could have been one of those scenarios. Uh, he could have been like, oh, I'm really hilarious. Yeah, and he no. Been like, oh, um, man. It, no, these guys are all great. Occasionally, you know, you, you do work with somebody who um, doesn't necessarily understand, uh, you know, kind of the fundamentals of maybe setting up a gag, you know, right, or, right, right, you know, right. speaking clearly and, right, you know, right. standing still and stuff <laughs> like that. But not this group. You know, and, uh, the, the hardest thing about Los Angeles a lot of time in doing television and film is, I would do funny, I love funny exits and things like that, but they would never make it <laughs> anything I did, you know? Nothing. I was, I was much funnier in those shows than, I think the crew would say, you know, I was funnier in those shows than I was ever really allowed to be or, or ended up being. What's your seen. favorite thing you got to do out in L.A.? Like, like um, you know, gosh, I, you've been on a I've lot of must-watch TV like, shows. Yeah, a lot of fun TV shows. I sort of loved, you know, Desperate Housewives was really funny. Yeah. I, you know, on my last day I shot that, the part was so, I didn't know what it was going to be. Uh -huh. um, the Mark Cherry, who created the show, the, the, my second or third day said, do you know what you want to hear where the character's going? And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. Right. He goes, well, you're going to be a, you know, a sociopathic uh, stalker. And I went, oh. <laughs> and so I started to get kind of you know, creepy immediately. <laughs> but you know, when I was dying in the last episode that I did, because I did like 17 of those things, yeah. um, I said to the director, you know, I, w you think I'll ever work again after this? And he goes, oh, no, no, this is your Gilligan. <laughs> 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 so it was really funny. I mean, I loved some of the stuff I had to do, but it was always funnier to me than a lot of people in the country who I'd see at airports would say things like, my wife hates you, you know. Shit right, like right. So it was hard. I, I always thought I was so funny. Yay, you know? thanks, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks so much. My autograph? Yeah. I mean, people would actually, I would go to bars and they would cover their cocktails because oh they were God. afraid I would poison them. <laughs> You know, come on. <laughs> and I've also done other fun things too. You know, like I, uh, I, I had this got a call from Eli Roth, and he was like, you know, do you okay. want to do Hostel Part Two? Okay. And I said, uh, what happens to me? You know. Okay, hold on. So okay. you, I literally over the weekend, <laughs> I was at home and yeah. I was clicked on the Showtime app. Right. And your face came on. Oh, oh like a big Roger Bart head on my TV. Really? Hostel 2. <laughs> and I thought, I've never seen a Hostel movie. Oh my and, God, did and you watch I'm, it? And I'm going to see Roger. Oh, 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 so oh, let, me, oh, let, me check, oh. let me check it out. How long so did you I last? Watched, I watched it on Fast Forward. But yeah. I watched all your scenes. <laughs> oh, okay. I watched all your scenes. A lot of them. The, yeah, that's but the, the ending. That's intense. crazy. Crazy. So at the end of that movie, is it a spoiler? No, you can say it. I get castrated. So, but you, you know what? No, but but I you don't just get castrated. Uh, what? You, no, it's you terrible. Get, it's it gets like fed to the dogs. Lope, uh, kind of, you it's know. It's ripped off rip, of you. Ripped off with scissors. Ripped off of you. Yeah. Right, it's cut and then like, but, but like you see, like, gra like yeah, molded, it molded off your own or? Uh, no. No, okay. No, just, as a matter of fact, I, I just said make it pretty. Yeah, you know, okay. And not too small. I don't want to be like, No, it's sizable. So they grab and then thrown at the dogs. Thrown at the dogs. And I thought, the this largest is, German Shepherds is, literally I, I've ever seen in my life. And they ate it in one gulp, and it was made of Alpo. <laughs> one gulp! So I guess take that, take that quote. I, I have a one gulp thing. So, but it's, uh, and it, I it thought, was extraordinary. I thought, this is the quality we're keeping Roger from Broadway. This is it. This you is know, what he's I up thought, to. Hmm, should I this is what it? he wants to do. This is <laughs> 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 no, man, it was good, though. But Prague was, I was in Prague for six weeks, which is uh, anybody who hasn't gone. It's the most beautiful city. Um, and yeah, it was a messed up movie, and that was messed up. But but I watched the playback, and Eli got a little mad at me because it to watch yourself at least try to act castrated has <laughs> got to be one of the weirdest <laughs> and funniest things I've ever seen. It, and it was so realistic. Matter of fact, at one point, you know, there was this one Czech guy who whose job was to sort of pump blood into my thing because it's supposed to have blood oh kind of come out of the area. And it only I remember one time he was madly kind of pumping it from off camera, and. Um, <laughs> And it, all it was doing, the blood wasn't shooting out. It was just filling my left boot. And I, I started off going, ah! Oh, and I was like, ah, oh, forget it. You know, we got to do this again. I know it's not coming up because I can feel it in my boot. But it was, it was an amazing experience. That's really funny. And I laughed really, really hard. And I'm not as scared of uh, horror movies now, having done that. But right. I understand. I heard there was an audible cheer in dressing rooms across Broadway when it was cut off. That's probably something you can edit anyway. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
you get to play a lot of creepy guys out. In a LA. lot of creepy a lot guys. Of creepy guys. Yeah, which is, you know, was that is that was that your type? No, it, it <laughs> no, it was weird. You know, it was like I I played. You play one, and then you're just in it, and that's what I right. mean about Desperate Housewives. I had never done that, and it was kind of fun because it was, you know, it was it was different. But then it it got a little old when, you know, like every show I did, uh, it was always like, ew, you had to go out with. Him, you know, like, like I think I did a 30 Rock, and you know, Tina Fey, you know, went out on a date with me, and and would sort of, you know, bartered offering up sexual services uh -huh. in order for me not to fire her employees. You know, it was a certain theme, which is sort of like, it, um, it, you know, ew. I would just sort of say <laughs> ew. That's what I was sort of. I was ew for about seven years. I kind of wanted to be just funny again. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It gets it gets a little old, but. And then fortunately, there was other shows like, you know, I've been on Episodes, which is a right. great show, yeah. really funny on Showtime. And, you know, I started to kind of like come around to getting more comic stuff, but it takes a while to break what it is that you do. And here, um, I get to be um, clowns. Mm. And, and, and I look back and stuff, most of them are bad guys generally, but funny mm -hmm. bad guys like, like Daffy Duck, and he's right. my favorite, so. Let's talk about Carmagia. That, that went pretty well for you, huh? Yeah, that was amazing. I would say that's that was the, the biggest producers. splash. Yeah, Carmagia was, and um, it was a wonderful. Um, the person who had done the role in the original movie, Andreas Futsinos, I think, is a, a Greek fellow who um, he gave me such a wonderful launch pad mm. um, from which to kind of do what yeah. I wanted to do, um, and also you know the costumes and, and the, the amazing words of, of Mel and, and Gary Beach as a partner. It was that was a, a thrilling uh, experience, and um, and I was old enough to know that it was so special that it was going to be special, and um, and I played a lot of roles uh, like that afterwards for right. a while too. What know? super gay guys? Yeah, super gay, funny, you know, um, flamboyant, which right, is right. fun because it again, you know, it, it, it if you are afforded an opportunity to be hammy or large, hmm. it's just fun. Right, and you were amazing as uh, Leo Bloom because you ended up playing Leo. Yeah, I got to play Leo, which yeah. was super fun too. Yeah, um, a great time. I think maybe even played that longer. You know, was ultimately, it, it I'm totally not sure. Was yeah, but uh, it, it was uh, uh, amazing to be in such a, a fantastic show, and you know, I just want to do every part. You know, they mm -hmm. were all amazing. So, do you ever see uh, Kristen Chenoweth? You know, I you know we, we traded texts sometimes yeah. every once in a while, but she's so awesome. She's great, I understand, so. Yeah, it was so cool how you, so you guys both won your Tonys for Charlie Brown, obviously, yeah. but yeah. it was like, and you were so so early in your career, both of you. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. and the show had already closed. Yeah, and I was sad, you went fast. Well, you told me before that the, the great story, which I think has extra irony now, that you, the day you got the Tony in the mail, <laughs> yeah. you had an audition that day to play what? I was auditioning for The Voice a voiceover of Jared from Subway. From Subway. His large pants. You were, were going to be the voice of his pants. Right. So I kind of was like running behind, and then I opened the box, and I was like, oh, my God, Tony, and there was my name, and it was amazing. And then I went downtown, and within 13 minutes, I was going, oh, it's so ruby in here. <laughs> <laughs> Still don't know why I didn't get it. But uh, I thought it was the right choice. But that would have obviously they would have stopped playing it around that, you know, oh. a few months ago. But yeah, we won't talk about that. So what? So what's like the goal? So if you're here now, yeah, and you have two daughters actually. I, I know do. You're, you're a pretty private guy. Like you don't talk much about like your daughters, but you have like a grown. I'm 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 less private than Daniel Day Lewis, and probably more than <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Less Others. private than Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> right. <laughs> but how are they? You have a grown daughter. They're really good. One She's is an actress, right? A uh, grown daughter uh, loves acting. Um, okay. Went to U University of Pennsylvania and went, and I said, if you're going to study acting, I I'll, I'll kill you. So <laughs> please don't. Um, not, at, not at University of Pennsylvania. So she wisely didn't, but she dabbled a lot there and, okay. and participated in the theater department. She loves to act, and she uh, works as a... In, in another civilian wonderful job right okay. now and, and hopefully and would like to get into show business in some form. Right. And my younger one is a you know like a, a state champion gymnast. Oh wow. Like balance beam and floor and all which is a great, great gymnast. She's a level nine gymnast, which wow. is an enormous enormously successful. What kind of crazy things can she do? I mean do you watch her and go like how'd oh, you do that? Oh yeah, it's hair raising. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she does crazy stuff, none of which I you know what she used to do when I was in LA, I would make her um, she had this really funny stuffed bunny, and I used to sort of, she would tell me, oh, I did a blah, 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 and I go, I really don't know what that means, please <laughs> just show me with the bunny, get the bunny. So she would get the bunny, 
on, on Skype. And she would sort of slowly kind of flip it like this and then do all this stuff. And it was sort of a routine we had all the time. But it's much more fun to be here and see her in person. And we used to have a joke, too, when she would do balance beam. I'd always look at her and I'd say, I'm going to go have a cigarette. I don't, I'd never smoked it. So I was like, I'm going to have a cigarette. I'm going to leave. And so I'd always go out outside the building and pretend I'd have a cigarette and then come back after because it was so hair-raising. But we're past that now. Hair-raising, literally. Literally, like, most terrifying and wonderful. She's amazing. And did she like disaster? She loved disaster. She, she like came to opening animal, night with, with like five other gymnast <laughs> girls, which was awesome. And some of them in flip flops, which is I wasn't what I was going to suggest for opening, but they came. That's Broadway now. Yeah, yeah that's right. It's really very cash. They had an amazing time. She only knew one song, "Hot Stuff." Oh, that's hilarious. And uh, but you know, loved it and loved you know loved the shtick I do and loved what everybody did. And it's very you know the show is so fast. Yeah, it sort of really suits kids uh, that are fifteen. Right. You know, with all their vining or whatever they do. It's <laughs> vining, all seven yeah. seconds long, which is, I think, our average scene length. So, you know, and sometimes <laughs> song length, you know. But it's really, really funny and quick. So you're back. I'm and back. And, and My goal is to, is to remain here. I just finished a, a series with uh, Nick Nolte and Helena York is in oh it. Yeah. And Skylar Astin is in it. Oh, um, nice. It's a really fun show about a president who's been out of office for 20 years, hmm. um, played by uh, Mr. Nolte, who is... Amazing, and so you know, perhaps if that goes to season two, it's on the Epics Network. That East Coast um, show? No, it, we will shoot it in. Um, we shot it in Albuquerque and Santa okay. Fe, so that would be right. great. But yeah. I would really love to stay home. This is home, New Jersey, New York is my home. So we'll probably get to see you uh, around a little. I more hope frequently. so. I'm trying. I'd love to be in other shows. It's really fun, you know. As long great. as I'm not, you know, getting castrated again. There's nothing there. That's done. <laughs> that ship is sailed. It's done. So, something else. It's so good to see it's you. It's so nice I'm to so see you. I'm so thrilled you're back. Thank you. That Everyone needs to check out Disaster at the Nederlander Theater on 41st, one block below Disney. Yeah, 41st. that's right. It's yep. still safe. Come see us. <laughs> it's all good. Thank you, Roger. Good Thank to you. see you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you for watching. See you next time.